So this is the room where Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas faced off. Yep. Um, no, I remember this very, very well. It's interesting. I've seen some of the shots on. Yeah, we're replaying that footage a lot at this moment. The TV, where I was asking the nominee questions and asking the hell questions. And based on what I heard, that's why I said I believed her. Yeah, you believed her. I did. And we seem to be having the same argument all over again. Do you think this moment is a chance for Democrats to resolve the sins of the past? I think this moment is a moment for the Senate to do the right things, not just Democrats. The Republicans are making a mistake of trying to rush this through. It shouldn't be rushed. This, we're talking about a lifetime appointment. We just have news that Dr. Ford's legal team has sent a letter to the Judiciary mm -hmm. Committee saying that she is open to testifying next week. They want to discuss the terms. What do you think she should be asking for? Well, I think she should have a, a clear chance to testify. I think Judge Kavanaugh should be asked to testify. But I also think Mr. Judge, who uh, Dr. Ford said was there, have him come in and testify. When I was a prosecutor, that's the person I'd want more than anybody else. Senator, you've been part of this body since 1975. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, in fact, the Senate is failing what it should be. The Senate should be the conscience of the nation. It's inconceivable that the Senate, when I was first here, would have blocked a nominee for over a year, as they did with Merrick Garland, is politically trying to thwart the will of the American people, and I think it started a downward spiral. This case could actually try to reverse that by doing it right, and don't give the American people the appearance we're trying to hide something. When the U.S. Supreme Court is seen as being the arm of one political party, what does that say to the rest of America?